I'm going to be showing you a way to create a point slope form equation that goes through a fixed point 0, 0 and a movable point a, b. And we're going to be doing that again in point slope form. So first I'm going to create the point 0, 0 to show up on the graph. And as you can see here, I click on it, try to move it, it doesn't stay because it is always at 0, 0. I'm going to create another coordinate and I'm going to call this AB. Right now Desmos does not recognize this as a value until I create it as a slider. I'm going to click on all and I'm going to create sliders and my list is going to start to get long here so I'm going to create a folder stuff I don't want to see and I'm going to drag these two sliders into that folder I see that vertical bar showing up there that means it's ready to be dropped in do that with B also. I'm going to hide those items. So now I know point slope form. Um, right now I've got this point right here at 1, 1. So I'm going to go Y minus the Y value of that point 1 equal to the slope there, rise and run. We'd be looking at a rate of 1. And we have X minus 1. So right now I have a line slope of 1 going through the point 1, 1. Awesome, I've got it. But remember, this is a movable point. So if I move this, the point moves and nothing else does. So I think, oh, what do I need to do? So maybe it's my, maybe it's my point. So now remembering that it's not going through 1, 1 all the time, I'm going to change this to be A and this to be B. So I'm starting to get my students thinking symbolically here. And I'm going to try, best thing about Desmos, trial and error, nothing breaks or blows up. We can try it and see what happens. I move the point. Now the line stays fixed to it, but my slope is constant. So I look back at this equation, and here my slope is constant as well. It's not accounting for A, B being a movable point. So if I think instead of slope as rise over run, I'm going to get that one out of there now. So for my rise value or my increase value in my y, my change in y, I've got b as the y value of the right coordinate and 0 as the y value of the fixed coordinate at the origin. And then I have a as the x coordinate minus 0 as the y as the fixed coordinate I now have this point slope form equation and again I can check it and see what it does and it stays on that point the slope is able to change now because I'm using those values from a and b in my equation to calculate the slope and you might be thinking hey you can simplify that and you're right we can simplify that including some extra parentheses we don't need here. And it's still going to work. And then I really like um, restrictions because those are going to make some um, cool, cool applications for students as they're trying to build pictures and um, other, other shapes that they don't want the line to be continuous. So if I wanted to say, hey, it looks like x is always between 0 and 1, that would be right, except when I go to here, it doesn't allow for the line to change in length. So, and as I go over here, it gets even crazier because now uh, we have x's in the negative quadrant. Um, so if I go back to here and I want to account for that change, I can use this minimum feature where I'm looking at between 0 and A as the minimum. Okay, so now we see it's at least keeping one of the endpoints here. And then if I go to my maximum, oh, undo, go to my maximum, and I want that same thing to be happening it's going to allow for, it's going to be looking at these two points and it's going to say my x range is between the minimum of those two points, which in this case that's 0, 
and the maximum of these two points, in this case that is A, and it's going to work in this area, which it did before, but now when it comes over here, now my minimum value is actually the A value, that's at negative 1.42, and my maximum value for my X range is at zero. So it allows for that checking of when one of the values is greater than the other and when that can switch. And we see that we've got that point slope form equation. In my original equation, or my original question, I didn't ask for it to be restricted, but that's kind of a neat thing that we can add on to it. So those are a couple of my favorite features that I use on a regular basis as I am building class activities in Desmos Classroom and, and working on um, getting my students to make more beautiful graphs. Thanks for tuning in.